All right, so VTech Mini build update. We got uh, the car rolled outside and we totally cleaned everything. We degreased it all. So you can see it's like really mint in here. A uh, little bit of touch up paint on some areas that needed it. Uh, and then we got the pedals uh, put into the car. We got all the pedals in, all three of them. Uh, engine bay pretty much prepped and then we did our first uh, test fit of the subframe. So we bolted the subframe in, uh, we drilled the holes in the, uh, in the floor uh, to bolt the bottom half on, make sure everything was clearancing and nothing was hitting. Uh, and then we pulled it out. Uh, I've got the fuel system working on right now. So uh, what we decided to do is actually cut the fuel lines um, right on the bottom. Uh, before they go up the firewall because what was happening is fuel lines were actually hitting where the subframe uh, bolts on um, and we couldn't really bend them around it would just look not really nice and professional so uh, we decided to cut them off and then I got some uh, special adapter fittings that go from hardline to dash 6 AN uh, fuel line soft line so we're gonna be running them up the, the new subframe uh, to the engine uh, all really nice and fittings so that took a bit of figuring yesterday uh, and then pretty much today I spent all day running around the city and grabbing all the little bits and bobs that we need for the uh, for the rest of the build uh, the main one that included the transmission uh, so I had to go to two different junkyards and uh, or wrecking yards and find a transmission end up scoring a really nice one It's from a 2001. So it's the last year of the Integra uh, It's a GS model. So it's not the super low uh, Gearing um, you apparently need a little bit longer gearing to run in the minis. Uh, so I got that it's a little dirty right now We're gonna clean it up and uh, and then I ran around and got a whole bunch of other stuff. I got some shift linkage uh, I got uh, bias adjusters, a bunch of fuel line stuff. I got all different sorts of fittings. Uh, so we're pretty much now ready to start bolting it all back together. Uh, and we can go and check out actually what I got because I got some pretty nice goodies. So here's the transmission we picked up. Manual transmission, it's a little oily right now, but I got some cleaner, we're gonna clean it up. Like I said, it was uh, 2001. So it's the last year of the Integra, last year of the V18. Um, one unfortunate thing with this transmission that I found is that this hole right here with one of the bolts that goes to the mount is stripped. Uh, so I had to pick up a Healy coil and we'll be drilling that out and Healy coiling it so it'll be good as new. Uh, also went to Honda or Acura and ordered new output, uh, diff output seals so that this is all nice and tight. Um, it won't be leaking or anything. Also got manual transmission fluid as well from Acura. Um, so uh, should be good to go once it's all cleaned up and got this Healy coiled. And then we got the other parts over here, very exciting. So we got manual transmission fluid, proper Acura stuff. Uh, with our clutch kit, we got an Exedi clutch kit with an Exedi lightweight flywheel. For some reason, it didn't come with the bolts that bolt the pressure plate to the flywheel, so I picked those up. I uh, got the Healy coil kit to fix the transmission. Uh, the transmission, when I picked it up from the wrecking yard, it didn't have the clutch fork. Uh, it didn't have any of the linkage system. So I actually found uh, a Honda Del Sol in the, in the yard. Unfortunately, it was on top of a Jeep, so I had to get them to forklift it up. And then went underneath and pulled it off. Uh, so I got the shifter linkage here. Uh, so this will be mounted on the Mini. And then these rods we're gonna be modifying so that they meet this piece here. It'll be welded onto this. And this actually bolts to the transmission and this changes the gears. Um, as well, we got clutch fork and the little rubber boot that goes over top. This should be almost everything we need to complete the build, minus a couple other little fittings. I got some parts on order at Acura uh, for those seals and whatnot. So other than that, uh, we should be good to go. The other thing today I did is I took off a whole bunch of the bracketry, uh, including the valve cover of our engine. Uh, so valve cover and all the little accessory brackets that are attaching to this. Um, and I brought these 
uh, to the sandblaster. So we're having them all sandblasted down to bare metal. Uh, and then we're gonna be taking them to a powder coater. And we're gonna have everything gloss black powder coated uh, for the certain things I couldn't take off. I didn't want it like the pulley here and the mount. I just painted black. Um, I took these off here, cleaned them up. Uh, all the bolts that go in here, um, I sent off as well to the uh, sandblaster and the powder coater. So they're all gonna be gloss black. Um, so once the engine's together, it'll look really, uh, really nice. So I'm excited to get those back today. And yeah, and that would be everything we got going on right now. So uh, next step, start installing. All right, just a little tech tip uh, when it comes to scrubbing things and cleaning things. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake uh, of when they're cleaning something to scrub really hard with the brush like this, thinking that it'll take the dirt off better. Uh, and one thing that we've noticed after many years of doing this is that in order to scrub things best, you want to do really light strokes because if you think about it, the second you push hard enough to bend the bristle, you're actually scrubbing with the side of the bristle, which has like no abrasiveness to it. Whereas if you go really light and you just use the top of the bristle like that, um, you actually pull the contaminants away from the surface and you're using the kind of rough edge of the bristle to clean it off. And you'd be surprised when you just do really light little strokes like that um, and then clean it off how much better it works than, than doing really heavy ones like this. It also saves your brush. Um, and I'm sure any dentist will tell you the same thing, just really light as opposed to scrubbing super hard. So this is a little tech tip when it comes to cleaning things off. With a build of this nature, there's a ton of parts, and unfortunately, we're noticing now that there's a ton of stuff that we are missing. The parts department is now closed. Regular business hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday from 8... It's a plate, okay. It's a plate, I yeah. I highly doubt we're gonna have that. That sounds like a dealer only, but let me know. I really doubt it. Yeah. Unfortunately, when we bought the engine, uh, we bought the engine just as a bare long block and we also just bought the transmission as a bare transmission and what that means is that we didn't have any of the bolts um, that were on it like for instance um, these ones here are to attach the pressure plate to the flywheel um, so we didn't have any of that stuff um, we didn't have any of the bolts that bolt the transmission bell housing to the engine so we had to go around and of course their metric fine thread which is super impossible to find so uh, after driving around for two days finally I found I think most of them but lesson learned if you are doing an engine swap uh, it's much easier to buy an entire engine transmission power unit together because all these little nuts and bolts and things that you need uh, take up so much time trying to find them so definitely something to pay attention to if you're doing a swap like this yourself. Okay. 
So in all of the chaos of having the engine installed into the subframe, I forgot to mention that we added something pretty cool to this engine. So I went and talked to my uh, teacher, uh, Ocean, and we may have mentioned it before. Um, he has a really cool shop called K2 uh, Chikara, and he does mostly Miata stuff and also Honda stuff, and he does some pretty crazy builds. We're gonna do a shop tour with him uh, just so that everyone can see what he has going on because he's got some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, anyways, he has done a lot of Honda B18s, and he was telling me that uh, one issue with the B18s is that when the oil gets too hot, uh, a lot of the times the block can actually warp a tight engine bay and whatnot. Um, so anyways, his uh, suggestion was to add an oil cooler and he actually makes his own oil cooler system for this, which is a super high-end oil cooler, all bespoke billet stuff. Um, and we picked one up for this engine. Uh, reason being is because if the blocks are warping under stock conditions in an Integra, which has a bigger engine bay, a bigger radiator, more cooling, then when we stuff it into a small engine bay of the Mini um, with its smaller radiator, now with the Mini, the radiator actually sits slightly um, underneath the fender, so it doesn't get as much airflow, so it'll run even hotter. So it's just more and more likely um, that, uh, that the oil could get extra hot. So uh, we decided to go ahead and get his oil cooler set up. And I'll show you what it looks like now. So this is the mount. Um, it's a pretty cool system. You have this sleeve here that can be indexed so that these can be moved anywhere you want. Um, this attaches to where the stock oil filter is. Um, and then it has these uh, 90 degree attachment points here. The total length of this is actually less than a stock oil filter. So you have more clearance up here, which in a mini is important. Uh, and then we're gonna be running dash 10 PDFE hose from here uh, over to an oil cooler. Uh, the oil cooler then goes to a remote filter housing. Now, because it'd be kind of annoying to get up in here with the, uh, the filter, uh, with the firewall being super tight, uh, this allows us not only to have an oil cooler, but also to relocate the filter to a more convenient location uh, for servicing. So the mount goes here, and then it goes to here with some lines that then goes to the cooler, and then it goes to uh, the oil filter housing, which will probably mount somewhere on the firewall. We'll have to figure out where everything sits uh, once we have it in the car. Uh, but this is a pretty cool addition. Uh, check them out, Chikara uh, is what they're called, and, uh, and they make these for both Miatas and for uh, a lot of Honda applications, and really, really high quality, really nice. Um, these are pretty neat here. You can index these however you like. Uh, this part here attaches uh, to, the, to the housing, and then this can be uh, moved. It's on a swivel. Uh, it's all sealed, so you can, you can position it however you like and lock it down. But uh, yeah, these are, these are pretty cool. So this will allow us to not have to worry about the engine block being warped um, when the car is driven uh, pretty hard and knowing the customer, that's right, talking to you, Mike, the, uh, it'll probably be driven pretty hard. So uh, we're excited about adding this. So here's our brake setup. So. This car started off as a 2000 Mini, so it had the front mounted um, uh, boosted setup with a uh, different master cylinder. We've converted to manual brakes. In order to do that, uh, this stud right here that holds the, uh, uh, the master cylinder on uh, was too short, so we had to cut that off, drill it out, and weld in a new stud uh, so that it's captive. Um, we then installed a yellow tag master cylinder the clevis on the yellow tag master cylinder is actually the small old school type um, clevis pin on this pedal here uh, because it's from the uh, different setup the pedal was actually the hole uh, was too big so we had to get a sleeve machined down and we welded that in so that it's back to the original size uh, for the yellow tag master cylinder a little thing to note uh, from here we made all new brake lines so uh, we're, like I said, trying to run as much AN as possible. So we made our own line. This is a 10 and a 12 mil metric that comes factory in the uh, yellow tag. Uh, 
We've then used this Nikop line. Nikop line is really nice. It's really easy to work with. It's our favorite hard line to use. Uh, it's a mixture of nickel and copper. It doesn't rust. Uh, it's really easy to bend by hand uh, and you can use it both with conventional double bubble and AN flaring. So um, that's our favorite line to use. We're running a 10 mil uh, to this bulkhead fitting, which is a three-way T uh, that is dash three AN. We have an AN fitting on this side here. Um, our really nice brake uh, flare tool that we have um, is capable of doing double flares, bubble flares, and 37 degree AN. So we just made our own hard line, so dash three AN here. On this side, we've got the 12 mil metric. Again, Nikop line to dash three AN that goes to our adjustable proportioning valve. So on the rear of the car, we've got it just teed off so that there's no proportioning valve on the rear. Uh, we took out the stock uh, proportioning valve, um, pressure differential valve that is normally right here and we replaced it with this, which is an adjustable one. So we want to, with this much power, have the brake bias just perfect so you get the max amount of grip without it swapping ends. On a Mini, because the wheelbase is so short, if you have too much rear bias, uh, they're really twitchy under braking, especially if you're trail braking into a corner or something. Uh, speaking of that, we took a look at the rear suspension uh, and rear brakes, and we uh, converted to half inch wheel cylinders in the rear. We feel like this will be the best match uh, with our big Willwood front brakes. Um, they're the smallest wheel cylinders you can get, which give the most front bias. I've found that minis uh, work really well with half inch wheel cylinders in the back. Uh, not only does it give you a little bit more front bias uh, on the braking, but it makes the pedal a bit stiffer, which is really nice. So with our combination of our half inch wheel cylinders and this adjustable proportioning valve here. Uh, we'll be able to dial in the, uh, the braking and make it really stable under braking. Uh, speaking of the rear suspension, the other thing we did, um, it already had high lows on the car. Uh, so all we needed was our adjustable uh, rear brackets here. So we put on some rear brackets that have both toe and camber adjustment. Uh, the car also has KYB AGX adjustable shock absorbers. So now pretty much the rear is done. Uh, we've got the wheels, uh, we've got the brakes. We added uh, inch and a quarter spacers. As you can see, the tire is super poking out, but we'll need this because we're running Miglia flares on this. And we'll talk about that um, in a little bit where we're gonna figure out kind of the look of the car. thinking about the next episode where we get the engine in if you like what you're seeing please like and subscribe below we're putting out a video every Friday so you can follow along with our VTech build and stay tuned for the next one <laughs> yeah, funny enough it's like exactly what we're working with right now yeah we have this Pretty close. Well, a lot of liveries are beverage company sponsored. Can we, we make the Pellegrino car? <laughs> we make it the Pellegrino car.